Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kate. <clears throat> that was very interesting, yeah. Uh, so I will be talking, I mean, this is obviously, I mean, based on the title, I'm not promoting a product in this case. I'm just talking about Zephyr and trying to highlight uh, how important neutrality in open source projects and the efforts uh, we have to go through on a daily basis almost to keep the project everyone uh, open for everyone, trying to avoid dominance. Uh, we have a lot of uh, companies participating in the project, delivering their own products and so on. And we always have to go through the effort and making sure through our processes, through our guidelines, through everything that we have in the project, making sure that everybody is treated the same. There is no, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, as a developer, as a, a user of Zephyr, you don't uh, have any uh, disadvantage because somebody else is, is doing things or treating Zephyr in a different way. So I guess by now you heard a lot about Zephyr. We are in the Zephyr uh, Developer Summit uh, talking about uh, Zephyr uh, features, Zephyr uh, infrastructure, Zephyr plans, releases, uh, developers and the community uh, uh, as a whole. And uh, one thing to understand in, in looking at Zephyr and what Zephyr is trying to do is uh, the fact that it actually came out of a product almost 10 years ago. Yeah, it uh, basically something that we took from a product and we tried to convert and, and co into something that is suitable for open source and uh, strengthening that even more by inviting uh, different industry leaders and, 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 and companies to join the effort to make sure that uh, it is not perceived as yet another product that is just, you know, releasing its source. And that actually went really well and we are almost 10 years later and still ongoing and with many participants in the project. Uh, uh, a growing community year to year, and that's going really well. Uh, and that is, happens only because how we design the project and how we structure the project. So we always looked at the project as a framework instead of a product. We, we try basically, there is no, I mean, everything is done in a way to enable everyone to be welcoming to everyone. So basically, uh, uh, it sits as a, as, as, as a flexible framework for building embedded systems uh, of different use cases, different architecture, different ISAs, uh, different, uh, uh, sometimes different cultures of how you do things in, in, in open source. Uh, the, the, the emphasis was always about uh, enabling product development as well. So th this thing was not just throwing some code out there and do whatever. We, we were always wanted to go and enable uh, product makers to take the next step, take Zephyr and do something with it. And uh, that has been obviously, I mean, as many of you know, very successful. We have a lot of products based on Zephyr and this, the, the, the community continues to grow and, and we, we, we will continue maintaining this neutrality in the project uh, and uh, providing the needed infrastructure that uh, equally uh, in, enables uh, developers and users to, to take Zephyr to the next step and, and do something useful out of it, not that Zephyr itself is not useful on its own. You can still go and, and do a lot of useful things uh, on, on, on any type of hardware. One thing that actually relates to uh, uh, what Kate was saying regarding the safety certification. Like one, one major problem that we, we always deal with when we talk about safety and certification and what, what we want to do is, the question that always comes up is, hey, which hardware are we going to certify, or which, which microcontroller, or which architecture, and so on. And that's, that's always tough, you know, because Zephyr tries 
to address all use cases. I know it, it will be very difficult to, to certify and, and take Zephyr all the way to certification on all architectures with all features and so on. So we have to select certain aspects of the project and, and probably some, some use cases that are common for many of the uh, users of Zephyr. So, you know, the next step would be is to, to take it to the next level with enhancing this and expanding the hardware support. But this is, this is something, a tough, a tough uh, objective and a, a, a tough uh, uh, problem that we always have to deal with. We have to be neutral and we have to provide uh, in, uh, an entry point for everyone and, uh, you know, and not uh, leave at, uh, anybody at a disadvantage. So here's just to summarize basically in terms of how we do things in open source and how things are developed. I mean, you have the upstream, in this case it's Zephyr, and we have many downstreams where people just take Zephyr, do whatever they add their secret source, sometimes in the open, so that's not secret anymore, but I mean, you, you, uh, uh, you actually do your own things without having to go through uh, the, the, the upstream processes and so on, and usually that's a lot of where a lot of innovations happen. Obviously, we welcome things to be upstream and be part of the project. Um, and that happens usually. And that's, uh, that's really, you know, one of the, uh, you know, it's, it's enabling this in our infrastructure and the way we do things. For example, one, one thing that was introduced very early in the project was uh, how do I manage external modules? How do I integrate, for example, uh, vendor hardware uh, uh, support like has? How do I, uh, you know, add functionality that is not necessarily uh, going to be at any time part of the project because of licensing constraints and so on? So this is something that we did like with supporting modules, with West and so on, and this is something that you can use to build product uh, on top of Zephyr without impacting the upstream development. And that's something we continue to support, we continue to encourage. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's very important for everyone here to understand. And that's, that's basically the main reason for, for this talk. I, I just want to reassure everyone here that Zephyr is open for everyone. And uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the main message is that you are not limited to have everything in Zephyr. You can do your own thing. With, 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 with the long-term uh, uh, you know, uh, goal, probably, is, is to upstream some of these things into Zephyr. Uh, so the clear separation between upstream and, and, and downstream is, is something we encourage, something we try to follow, something we want to enforce. And that uh, helps with getting more contributors, getting more companies, getting more vendors to actually participate and, and, and use Zephyr. Uh, it is usually very, very difficult to manage generic uh, uh, non-product, uh, you know, related features when, for example, you don't have the end goal of knowing what certain features actually would end up in products. So that's why it's, it's very important for us, at least in, in the upstream and the, the technical steering committee and, and, and you know, the technical, le technical leadership in the project to understand, for example, why certain things are being added in a certain way in our project. So when somebody is submitting something and we have no visibility into where is that leading, what is your use case, uh, it's, it, it's very tough to get things, uh, these things moving forward. So it's, it's, it's very important for any contribution and anybody submitting any, anything into Zephyr to at least you know, have a hint and, and show that the problem they are trying to, to solve, even if it's targeting a product, uh, is useful for other people other than, than them. Because if it's only useful for me, I mean, you don't have to upstream it in, uh, at the end. You can just keep it in your downstream. So there are also a lot of downstream concerns that we always have to deal with and, and address. Uh, you know, I mean, we can't just go and make changes that would break somebody's uh, downstream. That, that goes to APIs, but 
it, it can also extend to you know testing, to test infrastructure, CI, and so on. So that's very important for us to always keep an eye on what's happening downstream to, to, to allow us, uh, things to run as smooth as possible all the time. Uh, I mean, we don't really make guarantees like into, you know, I can go and, and change our CI and without thinking too much about uh, certain problems and, and, you know, one day later somebody will come, hey, you broke my CI. I mean, that we try to, to, to negotiate and, and, and deal with these issues and, and improve as we go. But usually there is no, like, you know, a, a, a general promise that your downstream, you know, will always be functional. Uh, the expectation is that the downstream follows the upstream uh, and, and try to coordinate with them as much as possible as well. So collaboration and communication, that's basically what I'm saying here. There's a lot of back and forth with the downstreams. Ideally, I mean, uh, you want to participate. You don't just want to work behind closed doors and not exposing yourself to what's happening in the project. We have a lot of communication happening usually, and uh, it is encouraged, you know, for everyone to to participate in uh, in, in in making you know the, the, using Zephyr uh, downstream uh, as smooth as possible in this case. So the conclusion here: Zephyr was started, continues to be a foundation for building products. We want to continue this. We, we want to keep it as neutral as possible. And we want to keep clear separation between uh, downstream and, and upstream, encourage parallel development uh, as much as possible so that you, know, you don't develop your product features on top of Zephyr and then fight for getting things into Zephyr to support a product which usually does not work. You always have to have your backup plan and, and, and run things in parallel. Otherwise, uh, you will have problems with, with your management in this case. Yeah? And that's just, just to clarify, I mean, this is something we, we, we do at Intel. I know many other vendors do that as well using Zephyr. And it seems to be working really well. That's it. Thank you very much, everyone, and yeah, I hope you enjoy the show.